What is going on everybody? Today is a great day because it is the first start sit video of the year. We won lots of leagues last year, so let's go ahead and start that again. If you want to join the squad, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and make sure your post notifications are on for when I drop these videos so y'all can get all the information you need. But you guys know me, I do not like to waste any time in these videos, so let's get to the players you need to be starting in week one. The first start here, we're going to get ready with some wide receivers. We're going Chris Godwin. This might be unappealing to some people because of the identity of the offense with Baker Mayfield, but if you look at the matchup, it's a pretty good one. They face the Minnesota Vikings who allowed some of the most points against them last year and their defense really hasn't changed the bucks are most likely going to be coming from behind or at least trying to keep that passing volume up to stay in it so the volume is going to be there and there's going to be a lot of opportunities for chris godwin baker mayfield is projected around 250 passing yards on the day which is pretty good for his standard and chris godwin mike evans are going to be the benefactors of that moving down to my next start of the week is going to be mike williams and this is a good one mike williams gets a really good matchup here against the miami dolphins and this is going to be one of the more high scoring games of the weekend the coaching staff is starting to form an offense where mike williams is primarily running out of the slot and this is really good for us because that means more targets and volume and any of us that have had Mike Williams in the past knows he's more of a boomer bust guy because he plays on the outside and gets those deep ball routes but now he's playing more in the slot as well so that just raises his floor even more and he's fully healthy which again from last season doesn't happen very often so you have to be starting him when you have the chance he's a huge red zone threat he's 6'4 but the other good part of this is that last time he played the Miami Dolphins he had 116 yards and a touchdown now I'm not saying he's going to repeat that again but it's a good matchup. We need to be starting it where we can. Moving into our running backs, though, the first running back that you have to be starting in all of your leagues is Travis Etienne, and he has been dropping a lot down everybody's trust and draft boards because of Tank Bigsby. But if there's any week to start this running back, this is the week. He's had the entire offseason to work with the team, and they're going to implement Tank Bigsby in moderation. He's a rookie running back. They don't need him to come out and light up the league. Especially in week one, the rookie backup isn't really going to overtake the starter. So there isn't too much of a threat there. This week, the Jaguars are getting a really good matchup against the Colts defense, who isn't the strongest, but the matchup itself is super good. This is Anthony Richardson's first game in the NFL, and the Jags know this. He's gonna make bad decisions, he's not gonna be super efficient, and he has no Jonathan Taylor to lean on, so expect even more pressure on Michael Pittman. Just by looking at the game itself, we can speculate that the Jaguars are going to run away with this game, which means more rushing volume for Travis Etienne because they don't need to play catch-up. I do think Tank Bigsby will get some receptions and have a little bit of work, but nothing that should make you not start Travis Etienne, and that narrative is being pushed a little bit too much, especially for Week 1. But another running back that I do like this week again is Alexander Madison, and this is my Risk It For The Biscuit play of the week. He might be risky, but he might also have a huge boom week. And if you are projected to lose, you might want to start him just for that extra kick. Now, the reason I do want to start Alexander Madison here is because he has a great matchup against the Bucks. Now, they might have a really good run defense, which they do. But we have seen time and time again when Dalvin Cook was missing time that Alexander Madison looked like a really, really good replacement. And on the other hand, if you don't personally trust Baker Mayfield, then Alexander Madison should be an instant start because the Vikings are probably going to be winning this game by a decent amount and they can run the ball out. He also does have a good amount of receiving upside. And week one is probably the week to start him until we figure out who is going to be backing him up is it ty chandler how much work is he really going to get so that's why he is my risk it for the biscuit play he could really do good but he could also underperform his projections a little bit so if you do need that boost go ahead and consider starting it. Next start for this week is going to be Khalil Herbert, who I don't have the most faith for the entirety of the season, but in week one, we should be starting him. There's no doubt that he is insanely talented in the games that David Montgomery missed last season. He looked like the better running back, honestly, and he was really efficient. Now he gets this backfield to himself besides having to split it with Justin Fields and Dante Foreman. And I do think his upside is capped because of that, but Justin Fields was rushing for 70 yards a game. That's not going to happen again this year, especially with their new receiving target in DJ Moore. I think he will split carries a little bit with Dante Foreman to extent, but Herbert should start as the main guy in at least week one. The real reason this is a really good start for me is because if you guys have watched any of my videos, YouTube or TikTok, you know I really do not trust the Packers offense and they get the Packers this week. The Bears are supposed to win this game. They could go up big and just run the clock out with Khalil Herbert. Again, another great reason why this matchup is good. Your Love also has no Christian Watson and possibly no Romeo Dubs, so it really could be a runaway game quite literally for Khalil Herbert. But the next guy on this list that I do want to be starting is a tight end, and his name is Kyle Pitts. I know that is an ugly name, but we drafted him as our first tight end in around round five or something like that. So we got to be starting him. You can't sit up. He's fully healthy for once. He gets a great matchup against the Carolina Panthers, who are top five in tight end points allowed. Desmond Ritter will presumably be looking for his tight end safety blanket. Yes, Bijan Robinson is going to get a majority of this work. They drafted him that early for a reason. That really should be a no-brainer. The next tight end you have to be starting this week is Tyler Higby. And again, if you guys have seen any of my videos recently, I've been telling you guys to pick him up, add him, trade, do whatever you got to do to get him for this week. Okay, maybe not trade, but you got to be starting him this week. And I was saying this because it looked really, really unlikely that Cooper Cup was going to be able to go week one 
And now there's reports coming that he is on IR and he's going to miss the first four games of the season, which is even more of a reason to start him this week. That makes Higby the number one target for Matt Stafford. Just because there's nobody else on this offense, Van Jefferson, Puka Nakua, they're not going to get a viable enough number of targets, but they have to go somewhere. And Tyler Higby had flashes last year that he can be that guy before injury. And now there's no other option. On top of that, they're getting a pretty good matchup here against the Seahawks who are going to pass a lot and probably win this game convincingly the game script is going to be very pass heavy for the Rams again really liking Tyler Higby here moving into the defenses that you need to be starting this week is the Washington Commanders and as a Commanders fan I'm not going to sell you on them I'm a pretty not optimistic guy here for my team but their defense has a great matchup this week as Chase Young is not playing do not even get me started on that I know I have the jersey back there but I don't want to hear it they get a matchup against the Cardinals who is not a good team but they also got Joshua Dobbs who just got to the team about two weeks ago he has not learned the scheme. The Commanders do have an above average defensive line to stop the run. They're going to make Josh Dobbs beat them. So I really do like the Washington Commanders defense this week. Also only rostered in about 35% of leagues. So they should be easily available to you. But the next defense I am loving this week is the Jaguars. So we talked a little bit about earlier in this video, but let me really get into it. The Jaguars only rostered in 17% of leagues, which is pretty much free on the waivers. And they get Anthony Richardson in his first NFL game. He's going to make mistakes. Anthony Richardson has no JT, so he can't rely on him to bail him out of situations. They're going to account for that. They're going to double team Pittman, do what they have to do. It is not a good matchup for them, which means it's a good matchup for the Jaguars. Not to mention the Jaguars really good offense. The next defense you have to look through and start is the Ravens. They are rostered in 70% of leagues though. So it might be a little bit harder to find them. But again, they get CJ Stroud in his first NFL game. And if you can't tell, we have a plan here. We have a script and we got to spawn camp the rookie quarterbacks. Now I do think CJ Stroud is a better quarterback than Anthony Richardson and Joshua Dobbs by a good amount, but his options aren't the best. He has probably the worst wide receiver core in the NFL and that does not help. Ravens will probably be up a lot early in this game which is going to help the defense as well. If they are available on your waivers or you have them on your team you should be rostering them and starting them in week one. So that is going to close off this video of the players I am starting this week. I really do appreciate you guys watching this. If you did get any kind of value go ahead and drop a like and I will see you guys in the next video.